Hello, I am Frostburn Icepack doing another video on prehistoric wildlife. Today we are doing the Winnetotherium. I will probably accidentally call it the Unitotherium as that is how the name appears to me. Anyway, its name means the Unita Beast after the Unita Mountains in the US. It's named by Joseph Leadley in 1872. This will that will be mentioned in the main documentary. The species we are looking at is the Unitotherium anceps, and its time period was the Presian to the Bartonian parts of the Eocene. Imagine a rhinoceros with several smaller horns on top of its head and forward teeth similar to that of a saber-toothed cat, and you have a rough idea of what Winnetotherium would have looked like. Although the first, it was, though first named by Joseph Laidley in 1872, Unitotherium Winnetotherium would become involved in the Bone Wars, a well-publicised feud between the paleontologist Orthaniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope. Orthaniel was the English paleontologist and Edward was the American paleontologist. These two paleontologists were constantly trying to outdo one another in terms of discovering and naming new prehistoric animals. But each would often end up with the remains of the same type of animal, but each would give it their own name of choice and refuse to acknowledge the validity of the other's name. As far as Winnie Tetherium is concerned, Laidley was the first to name it, but both Marsh and Cope came into possession of further remains and subsequently provided their own names. Because both Marsh and Cope were both blinded by their desire to outdo one another, neither recognised the reality that they had described one another's creature, and it had already been named. As time progressed, however, the true realisation of this mess was found by the wider paleontolo paleontological community, and Marsh and Cope's names did exist only as synonyms of the Unita Winnetotherium, one of the Winnetotherium genus in the past. Whoa, I'm sorry. One of the further elements of confusion, however, is that a lot of species have been assigned to the Winnetotherium genus. In the past, this is partly because even further study has since found these species un only represent a single species, while some of these are still very occasionally mentioned and recent as recently as the early 21st century. Only the type species of Unitotherium anceps is universally recognised by all. Although Winnetotherium is quite well known in terms of fossils, there continues to be uncertainty as to which mammals it is more closely related to. In terms of form, Winnetotherium is similar to a rhino, but is not considered to be related to because other primitive rhinos of the early and mid Eocene were typically very small and different to the rhinos we know today. A recurring theory is that a recurring, a recurring theory that is not widely accepted, however, is that Winnetotherium, as well as other dinosaurians, is related to the Anagolidia group of mammals, which are thought to be the ancestors of lagomorphs, aka rabbits and hares, and rodents. Rats and mice. Most, however, c today consider Winnetotherium to be an ungulate, a hoofed mammal, but it, exactly how it fits in with other ungulates is not certain. Winnetotherium will continue to be studied in the future, and possibly further discoveries of similar animals may yet help provide further information for paleontologists to work to work from. The most instantly recognisable features of Winnetotherium are the three pairs of horns that project upward from its head. The first pair on the tip of its snout, the second pair between its eyes and nostrils, and the third almost at the back of its skull. Paleontologists are confident that this asser ascertaining in ascertaining that these horns were for displaying in attracting males as they are only present on the males 
I mean, as when I said attracting males, I meant attracting mates. A further suggestion has been made that the horns may be used in contests between two males in a similar manner to how deer use their antlers. It is certainly feasible since a large number of smaller horns would be capable of locking in an oppo with an opposing animal. A mature, proven individual with possibly slightly larger horns would have an advantage over a younger, less well-developed individual. A further sign of sexual dimorphism is that the enlarged upper canine teeth, which appear to have been larger in the males, something that has led some conclusion that we need a theory of males they have bitten each other in oh, each other in dominance contests, although it is possible that they could have been an additional display. In life, these enlarged teeth were thought to have been used in feeding, either for rooting up buried plant parts, or perhaps even for pulling large amounts of aquatic plants. The other teeth in the mouth were relatively small and not suited for processing tough vegetation, which implies that Winnetotherium had to specialise in eating soft vegetation and could have eaten without extensive processing in its mouth. One interesting feature about Winnetotherium is that it had a concave skull, which means that it dipped inwards instead of outwards, like most other animals combined with thick wool, like most other animals. Combined with thick walls of the skull, this would have been reduced the cranial cavity that resulted in a smaller brain size. By today's standards of mammalian intelligence, Winnetotherium didn't even come close. It was probably restricted to certain patterns of behaviour. However, Winnetotherium, like other animals, would only need to be intelligent enough to adapt to its environment with a temporal range of approximately of approximately 15 million years. Therefore, it was more successful than many other animals in this. I hope you understand this, because what bits I'm reading, I really don't. So just check my time. As the Eocene period progressed, larger brontotheres such as megacerops and primitive rhinos, like megamayanto, Megamyindon began to appear on the landscape. In time, these similar herbivores seemed to have displayed dinosauratins like Winnetotherium from the ecological niche. So, as far as so far, no remains of Winnetotherium have been found in late Eocene deposits. Thank you for listening. I know I read that extremely poorly. I'm really sorry. But here's it compared to a 1.8 metre tall human. I hope that sharpens up. See, so it long canines there. Horn, three horns. And they weren't like pointy rhino horns. Well, you could see three horns there. Three horns on both sides of its skull. They were kind of more like... Uh, Little um, spikes, not pointy though, with a kind of rounded top. I'll show the second image I got here, which gives you a better view of how the horns would have looked. It also looks uh, very similar to another creature. I'm not sure if they're related. Let's see if we can find the book. Um. Most likely won't. No, I'm sorry, I can't find it. Thank you for listening. This has been Frost and Ice Bite. Goodbye.